Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to this new section. In this section, we are going to talk about the web and yes, that is the fun part. A lot of you might have been waiting for it, but I still recommend please go ahead, watch the previous videos as well. They are strong foundation and the strategy that we have followed, although you are not aware of it, but you are going to see that, yeah, everything that we are going to discuss here already has been talked and we are just utilizing them now. So let's talk about web and modules in this section again. Don't forget, big shout out to pro.learncodeonline.in so that we can put up the series. Now let's go ahead and talk on to two stuff which we are going to use in this video. The first one is lco.dev. Now this website has nothing to do. Uh, this is just a domain I was having lying around so I put up some of the HTML text up here which is usually there around. I change them time to time but this is what we are, we are going to send the web request. The web request that we are talking about in this video are not the web request of the APIs and the JSON calls and handling the JSON data or the APIs. That is a different segment. We will talk about it, but not in this video. In this one, we just want to grab all the data on this homepage and we'll see how we can do that. And obviously to do so, we need some of the packages and luckily for us, the HTTP package is the most famous and helps us to do all of this. But we need to see some of the documentation so that we know what we are doing, how we are doing and why we are doing it. There are definitely other packages that you can use, but the one that you'll be mostly using is the net HTTP, which is one of the fastest and the most recommended way of handling the web request, at least in the, in the Golang. Yes, there are others, but we'll be just talking for this one. If I go ahead and look onto the index up here, you can see there is a whole lot of things that are going on in here. And surely there is no shortage of it. You can go ahead uh, and use to handle the cookies. You can handle a whole lot of stuff. Let me go back. I accidentally click on that. And you can also go ahead and manipulate the headers. So there we go. These all are just to handle the headers in case you want to do that. And there are a little bit up here as well in case you want to go for that. And not only that, you have a whole bunch of requests as well that you can fire up. Definitely, I'll walk you through how to do that. It's not that much complex, which is getting seen up here. Uh, but notice here, there is a lot that is available for you. Now, I would like to bring your attention to something here in the examples. You can go ahead and see these examples directly for get, handle, functions, and hijackers, and all of that. Uh, we'll be just talking for the get, up, get request up here, at least in this case. But I want to bring your attention to something very important. If you open up these types, you are going to see that there is a type response. So whenever you make a request to any of the web website, basically, you'll get a response object back. And this response object study of this is super important for you in case you want to go too much in depth of Golang. Now, when you make this uh, response or you get this response back, uh, you get a whole lot of properties that you can explore. For example, there is a status. Maybe you want to only proceed if you have received a status of 200, which is okay. And probably if you have received something like 404 or something 500 errors, you want to proceed differently. So in that case, checking of the status and the status code is super, super important. Now, of course, we receive headers. Maybe it is involving some kind of authentication and some kind of special request. You can go ahead and change your headers or check your headers or can configure your headers as well. Now, I would like to bring your attention to something uh, important here, which is this close. Surely content length and everything is here. We're not gonna talk on that. But this close is actually super, super important, especially this line, uh, which says read response nor close nor response.write ever close a connection. You could have wrote that in the red as well. But again, the point is, make sure you always keep an eye that whenever you are making a request, neither your reader, neither your writer is actually closing that request. So if the request says after like few seconds, you redirect onto some another page or do something else, your request will be doing that. So it is very important for you. In fact, it is your responsibility to close that response. So this is what I wanted to bring your attention. This is something which is talked a lot in the Golang community. So you should keep an eye. And this is clearly mentioned, I think uh, a small highlight on here that write everything on this one like this, it would make much more sense, especially in the red that it never ever uh, close a connection. Uh, nor it is like written a little bit cryptic way, but that's what the gist is. Okay, so that's all the knowledge that we wanted to have. Now let's go ahead and write our code for that. It's actually a little bit easier. I have created a new folder, web request. So we're gonna right click and create a new file, calling it as main.go, just like always, no surprises there. 
let's go ahead and open this up into an integrated terminal and say go mod in it and we're going to call this one as lco request yeah that's a fine name and let's go ahead and create a package this will be a simple main package we'll have a simple function that we are going to call this one as main usually such requests are created into separate fold separate uh, function definition so that you can multi-use it but this is our start so don't panic on that part just like always let's have a font request so we're going to say lco web request yeah that's nice the first thing that we're going to do at the very top in fact at the global space we are going to create a variable where the url will be defined it's not compulsory but having this url at the very top makes sense so that anytime you want to make a request to another url you are able to do so now in this case we are going to provide a simple lco.dev again simple line url i highly recommend you to start with this one only and once you are done with this then only move to something else so that in case you face any error or something you can compare the code so writing had exactly same at initial level is recommended but feel free to change once you are comfortable okay so for this uh, we're going to make a simple http request uh, it is coming going to come up from the net package and it has a lot of methods you can go ahead and say i just want to have a get uh, definitely there is a post as well uh, but we're going to go for a get method up here like this now it requires just uh, one parameter which is url url if i can write that now obviously once you are making a request your request might go through might not go through reasons can be hundreds like low internet connection or maybe no internet connection or something may be wrong at the other end so let's go ahead and see that how we're going to handle that we are going to call this one as response if everything goes successfully or our classic error is going to come in Let's go ahead and handle this like this. And there we go, let's save this one. Obviously the net package comes in. These two are, I'm happy because I haven't used them. Let's go ahead and do classic uh, error checking. If error is not nil, uh, then obviously it's time to show some panic mode. There we go, and we're going to show some error. Okay, now if the response has gone through correctly, and we have received a response. Let's go ahead and see that what is going to be this response. So we're going to go ahead and say, uh, first let's check out what is the type of this response. Obviously it's going to be type of response, but I just wanted to show you to bring your attention to this thing here. Response is of type, and we're going to use our favorite person capital T, of course with a slash in, and then response. A lot of people think that this response is going to be of type of string or bytes, but this is where it gets a little bit fancy. And remember, it is our response, and this response has a, a public object, which is body, and you need to close this one. I told you just a moment ago, this is your responsibility. I would like to write that as well, that it is caller's responsibility to close the connection. Okay, so this is all good and nice. Let's see that how this actually goes through. Go run main.go and it comes in an LCO web request and there we go. I told you it takes a little bit of time so make sure you are patient with that. Notice here it says the responses of type, do you remember this asterisk? Yeah, that's a pointer. And it says http.response. So this is not an ordinary bytes or an ordinary string you get a reference of the original response that we have received. And thus, I told you, this pointer is being utilized a lot. So thus, there is a guarantee that you are not receiving any copy of this response. You are actually getting a response so that you can manipulate it further. Okay, now one more thing. Since this is quite a common of operation, I'm going to go ahead and defer this. That no matter what you do, once you are done with all of the things, just go ahead and close this connection so that I can be happy with that. And I'm going to keep on writing my code after that. So let's go ahead and see that what else we can do. Now we can obviously read this response. So how we're going to read that. Majority of the reading is going to be done by the IO utils. Remember, I told you majority, not all. So majority will be done by this. And previously we were reading the file. This time I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to read all. Now notice here, read all reads from uh, all of these format, uh, this is what the standard is. So we are not reading directory this time. We are not reading file. We want to read all of it. And what do we want to read? Response.body. 
This body is the attribute. Remember, there is a headers and there is a body. We are interested in body in this case, of course. Let's go ahead and see that uh, data bytes. Yep, you remember that from the last video and the error. And there we go. Do you want to see the data bytes directly? Uh, probably not. You want to convert that into a string, so we're going to do the same. Okay, first let's check out the error. If error is not equals to nil, that means something is there inside the error. That means it's time to panic. So panic, and we're going to throw up error inside that. And if there is no error, this means we don't get into this block of code. That means everything is fine and we are happy. So we want to read this uh, data up here. So let's go ahead and say, I want to convert this data byte into the content. We can go it on the go as well, but I prefer to do it onto a separate line. So I say content, and this content will be converted via the string, and once we pass on this data byte. I know this is an extra line, but this is the syntax that you'll be using most of the time. Let's go ahead and do a fump print of this content, and that's it. Told you, it's really, really simple. You just make one liner up here, which is HTTP get, but what you receive the get, uh, that gets more complex as, as you reach more to closer to the production level. Right now, I haven't checked the status. I haven't checked the status code that would add an extra line of code, but I think you can do this. Uh, do all of this once you receive the status code, okay. But this is fine. Let's go ahead and see that how much of the response we are able to get it. And notice here, we are getting all of this nice and easy. We are receiving the entire HTML because that's what it is in the body. And we are seeing this, so I'm pretty happy. And it also gives you my Instagram. So go ahead and follow me up there as well in case you want to. Okay, that's basically it. This is your basic one-on-one -on -one handling of the web request. Of course, this is the less work that you'll be doing. Majority of the time, you'll be handling APIs and stuff. But don't you worry, there is still time in that. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.